Let us stay in this presence of the Holy Spirit. Låt oss lite den helige ande. Let's just for a few minutes. For nu få minuter. The Holy Spirit came upon the people so that they could go. Det helige ande kom på folk så att de kunde gå. And the Christian church in the world, we are the people of the Spirit. Och vi som de kristna i världen, vi är det folk av ånden. But we are also the people of the Word. Men vi är också folk av ordet. So when Jesus did ascend at his time here on earth. Så när Jesus han gjorde ett descent när han var här på jorden. What he did was that he said to his people I want you to to go. Det han sa till folket var att de skulle gå. In Luke chapter 10 he sends out his disciples to go. I, I Lukas kapitel 10 så sender han ut sina disipler till att gå. And we will soon read that text but I want us to stay in this presence of the spirit. Och vi ska snart läsa en text men jag önskar vi ska vara i i i ånden nu. Because I, what a What, what's going to happen now is that we're just going to stay in this this presence of the spirit. Hvis vi ska bara vara nå i i ondens närvar. Because the spirit is 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 uh, confirming his word For as his Helion. word gives us some keys to how we can go. För Helion han han bekräftar sitt ord och ger oss nycklar till hur vi kan gå. Last time a big gathering like this happened in Norway. Sist gång det var en sån stor samling i Norge. Was in the middle of the 90s. Var på mitten av 90-talet. I was a teenager. Jag var en tenåring. And we were about 10,000 people in the spectrum. Och det var över 10,000 folk som här. And we had a German evangelist called Reinhard Bonke was speaking. Reinhard Bonke talade och det var mycket evangelisering. And you know what he spoke on the text that Christine Kane has been speaking on today. Och han talade om det som Christine Kane snackar om idag. He spoke about being a people that were willing to go to the right place where God is sending. Han sa om att att folk var skulle vara villiga att gå till de rätta platsen som Gud kallade dem till. And the sent team they have prepared. Och det sent team som de har förberett. They have prepared some challenges for where we can go. De de har förberett på de utmaningarna när de ska gå. But I want to testify for you in the mid 90s when I was a teenager. Jag vill vittna för dig när jag var på ett som tenåring på mitten av 90-talet. In an environment like this the Holy Spirit came upon me. I ett närvar som det här så kom den helige ande på mig. And I made a decision I will go. Jag gjorde ett val att jag vill gå. I want to plant a new church. Jag vill planta en ny menighet. I want to send out missionaries. Jag vill sända ut missionärer. I want to train young people. Jag vill träna unga folk. And I've been given my life doing that since that since then. Och jag får lov att göra mycket av det sin den gång. And I believe that the Holy Spirit is doing the right the same thing here today. Och jag tror att den helige ande gör akkurat det samma här idag. I believe the Spirit is moving on us. Jag tror att den helige ande beveger sig på oss. And we will soon ask the Holy Spirit to come again. Och vi ska snart spöra när helige ande kan komma igen. He is here but to con- to confirm the word. Han är här för att bekräfta sitt ord. Let me just draw a few uh, points out from the text in Luke chapter 10. Låt mig bara ta ut någon punkt från Lukas kapitel 10. He says go your way. Han säger gå av sted. I send you like lambs among wolves. Jag sänder dig som lam bland ulvar. And then he says carry neither money bag. Så säger han ta inte med dig pengepung. Or knapsack. Eller väske. Nor sandals. Eller sko. And greet no one along the road. Och stanna inte på vägen för att hälsa på folk. I would need to talk to Jesus about the last one there. Vi tror vi måste snacka med Jesus till Jesus med den sista där. Because we should stop and talk to people, shouldn't we? För vi borde ju stoppa och snacka med folk, borde vi inte det? But point number one is this. Men poäng nummer en är detta här. There was a contemporary group of of Jesus' disciples at the time when he was there. Det var en samtidsfolk av Jesu disipler på den tiden där. They called them the dog philosophers. Som som kallades så what? The dog philosophers. Alltså hunde filosoferna. The cynics. Cynikerna. They didn't own anything. De ägde ingenting. They didn't they didn't brag about their wealth their wealth. De skrutiga av sin välstånd. But they made sure that they when they walked around preaching their message. Men det de gjorde var att när de var runt och, och talade sitt budskap. The first thing they spoke about. Det första de talade om. Was not about next year's vacation. Var liksom inte nästa års uh, vacation. Ja, liksom uh, ferie. They didn't talk about the stuff that they bought. De snackade om liksom de tingen de köpte. They didn't flash they, did, they didn't flash their wealth. De liksom inte kastade ut sin välstånd. See every generation has a value system. Se var generation har ett värdesystem. And over the last decade we've seen that money wealth and power is, is, is the real values of our part of the world. Och det sista tio så har vi sett hur den pengar och välstånd har verkligen blivit den största värdien i i vårt samhälle. When the Holy Spirit is coming upon us today he's asking us clarify your values. Så när helgen faller på oss idag så vill han spöra oss var klar för vilken värde du har. Make sure that the value is not your career, not your education, not the stuff that you own. La inte din värde vara din utdannelse eller din karriär. Make sure that the first stuff you talk about is the good news 
of Jesus Christ. Det först du snackar om var de goda nyheterna om Jesus Kristus. Amen. Amen. And then he says. Och så säger han. Whenever you enter a house. När det kommer in i ett hus. And you find a person of peace there. Ska du först se si fred vara med det hemmet. Then you say peace to this house. Så ser du fred vara med detta hemme. The concept of shalom. Konceptet av shalom. Of peace. Av fred. Is 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 a is a red thread through scripture. Det är röd tråd genom skriften. Because God wants peace for all people. För det Gud vill ha fred för alla folk. It's a key word in Babylon when the people were in exile. Shalom. Det var nyckelord i Israels folk när de var i Babylon. It's not just non-war or non-conflict. Det är liksom inte den motsatta konflikt eller krig. The people of God that go should be the ones praying for their business leaders. Folk som går var bör vara de som ber för förrättningsledare. We should pray for the principals in the schools. Vi borde be för rektorerna på skolorna. We should pray for our for our business partners and the neighbors down the street. Vi borde be för våra förrättningspartnare eller naboarna på gatan. Let us become a church that is a blessing church. Låt oss vara en menighet som är en välsignande menighet. Let us become the people of the peace of God to our neighborhood. Låt oss vara folk av fred av Gud till vårt nabolag. Let's be known for the light that we are lighting up with. Låt oss vara känd för det lyse vi skinner med. And then he says. Så säger han. Remain in the same house that you're going to. Och bo och bo där ett fred eh och var där det hus boende det huset som det kommer till. Eating and drinking the stuff that they put ahead of you. Spis och dricka det de byr dere. Twice in this text Jesus challenges his disciples to eat and drink what is set before them. Två gånger i den texten så så utfordrar Jesus disciplen på att spisa och dricka det som blir satt föran dig. I've been a church planter now for 18 years. Jag har varit med i kyrkeplantning i 18 år. And one of the challenges that we really felt at the beginning years was that we really need to take a step closer to the culture we're in. Så det vi förste i de första åren var det vi kände var att vi måste verkligen ta ett steg närmare den kulturen vi bor i. We need to level the ground. Vi måste liksom jävla ut grunden. And that's what he's saying with eating and drinking. Det är det han menar när det står där om att spisa och dricka. I heard about this guy. He he met some Eritrean people. Jag hörte om den här fyren som mötte folk från Eritrea. They had the best coffee in the world. De hade den bästa kaffet i världen. He had only been drinking Norwegian coffee. Han hade han hade bara druckit norsk kaffe. So one June night he had some strong Eritrean coffee. Så en natt där som han hade druckit en sån kaffe. He didn't sleep before Christmas. Han sov inte för jul. Because there is a risk. För det är en risiko. To eat and drink what is set before you. Och spisa och dricka det som är satt föran dig. But you build the bridge. Men det är att bygga broar. In 18 in 1967 or in 1967 there was a social psychologist that did an experiment so var det en social psykolog som gjorde ett experiment he wanted to find out how large is the world han ville finna ut hur stor är egentligen världen so he took all the phone books in the united states and he put them on a stage like this så han tog alla telefonkatalogerna i usa och lade dem på linje på en scen så det här out a couple of names så tog han ut några namn and he said to the class please if you know these people then call them så sa han till klassen, "Vi ser känner någon av dessa, så please ring dem." If you don't know them, call someone that might know them. Hvis du inte känner dem, ring någon som du tror känner dem. And the experiment has been done many times after. Och det experiment har vi gjort många gånger senare tid. And it shows that the world is not a large place. Och det visar att världen är inte ett stort sted. There are about six relationships from this room to any person on the planet. Dem trent sex relationer från var till vart enda människa i världen bara från detta rum. What Jesus has asked us to go and do. Det som Jesus spör om om det og, og, og det vi ska göra. Is the real plan. Tell or it is the real plan. Det är på att planlägga. It is the real plan to how we can reach our neighborhoods. Och verkligen liksom eh planlägga nå hur kan vi nå nabolagen våra. And our cities for Jesus. Och och byarna för Jesus. And then he says then to so see on so You pray for the sick and they will be healed. Så ber det för de sjuka så ska de bli helbredda. The leader of the city council in Oslo was at a prayer vigil here in Oslo. Ledaren av av rådet i Oslo han kom till ett bönemöte. He was invited he's not a Christian man I believe. Han är inte en troende tror jag men han blev inbjudet. So he came to the prayer meeting. Så han kom till bönemöte. And they said what is the most surprising thing at this prayer meeting? Och så spurte de vad är det mest överraskande med detta bönemöte? He said it's more people than I ever thought it would be. Han sa det fler folk än hade trott det skulle vara. Because it is true. För det är sant. That in Norway today and in Scandinavia today. Att i Norge idag och i Skandinavia idag. The Christian church in many ways is under underground. Att på något sätt den kristna menigheten är på något sätt i undergrunden. But then the leader comes and he says it's bigger than I thought. 
Och så säger den här läraren, det större än jag hade trott. And then they ask him, have you ever been praying? Och så frågar de han, har du någon gång bett för? And then he says, så sa han, I've been flying a lot in Africa. Jag har flytt mycket i Afrika. Don't you love how politicians can just answer whatever they want? Eller skulle du vara en vara en politiker bara säga det de vill? Have you ever prayed? I have been flying a lot in Africa. Har du har du någon gång bett? Jag har flytt mig i Afrika. I've been flying a lot on Western Norway. Jag har flytt mig i på västlandet. And if you're eight people in a small airplane. Och just det nu folk ett et lite lite fly. And you come over a hill and they're gonna land in a valley somewhere. Och så kommer du över ett litet fjäll och ska landa i, i en dal en plats. And you're not sure whether there is an airport there. Och så är du inte säker på om det är en flygplats där. Sometimes it's combined with a local grocery store. Någon gång så är det liksom kombinerat med en lokal butik. I tell you when you land in western Norway or in Africa. Så jag säger det om du landar på västlandet eller i Afrika. Something happens with your prayer life. Någon någon sker med bönelivet ditt. See the thing is this. Så tingen är det här. I'm a pastor. En pastor. But I'm also a neighbor and a friend. Men jag är också en nabo och en vän. And I've had people that are non-believers come and knock on our door and say please pray for us. Jag har nabo som har kommit och bankat på dörren och frågat om vi kan be för dig. Because we, if healthcare is not enough. För att hälsovården är inte gott nog. And if insurance doesn't cover it. Och försäkringar dekker inte nog. And people find themselves in a desperate situation. Och folk finner sig själva i en desperat situation. And there is an established relationship. Men där är det ett etablerat förhåll. Then people come and they say please pray for me. Så kommer folk och säger, please be for me. See, I believe that the send that Jesus is doing here. Så jag tror att det Jesus gör med det send här. Is a pattern for the send that's happening in 22 right here. Är 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 ett mönster som som Gud gör med det send 22 här. When you establish the relationships. När du etablerat förhåll. When you uh, when you when you respect the people that you are around. När du respekterar folk du är runt. When you invest in the neighborhood and the local community that you're in. När du investerar i nabolaget och i samfunnet runt där du bor. Then people will come and they will ask and you can pray for them. Så vill folk komma till dig och spör hej kan du be för dem. And then last it says. Och det slutar så sägs det. Tell them that the kingdom of God is near. För tell dig att Guds rike kommer nära. See right under the cover. Så rätt under liksom överhänge. Av sekularism i Norge och i Skandinavia. Av sekularisme i Norge och Skandinavia. There is a hindered faith in this country. Så är det en 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 skjult tro i vårt land. I've been talking to so many politicians and leaders. Jag har snakkat med så många politiker och ledare. And there is always a spark of faith there. Det är alltid en, en lite gnist att tro där. And what I believe is that what the Holy Spirit will do in this generation. Och det jag tror den här lönen ska göra i vår generation. Is that he will ignite the witness, the testimony in a group like this. Att han vill tända det där vittnesbördet i en grupp som det här. But then he will also effectively ask us to go. Så vill han också igen spör om vi kan gå. With a pattern of having the right values med ett med mönster av riktiga värderingar. Building great relationships. Det är att bygga goda relationer. Offering prayer. Det är att tillby bön. And communicating that the kingdom of God. Och kommunicera Guds rike. The kingdom of God is near. Att Guds rike är nära. quick testimony of what God did in evangelism. And so I was out on the street the other day, and I was out with a few friends of mine, and as we're walking, I see this guy standing around. So I walk up to him and uh, and uh, just start chatting for a while. And as we're chatting, I see that he has a cross around his neck. And so I ask him, hey, you see that's a nice cross. Do you believe in God? And he says, no, actually, I believe in myself. And I said, oh, great. So we chat for a little bit more. And and so he says, I'm actually looking for something. And I say, hey, that's awesome. At one point in my life, I was also looking for something. Can I share my story with you? And so I shared a story of me as a young boy praying to a God that I wanted to know and how he responded to me. And I saw that the story moved him. And so I asked, hey, if you have ever had an experience with this God? And he says, no, I don't think so. And I said, do you want to have one right now? And he says, yes. I say, great, what can I pray for? And I ask if he has any pain in his body or anything like that. He says, yes, I broke my back several years ago. It never fully heals, I can't really bend over, and my knees are in a lot of pain, and so I can't really squat down. And I says, great, my friend's gonna pray for you, God's gonna heal that. 
And so my friend prays, he gets completely healed. And it, his eyes are so big. And at the same time, I'm wearing my favorite jacket. But I feel God, hear God saying, Arl, you're going to give him your jacket. And so I take my jacket off. I put it on him. And uh, I, I just, uh, he starts weeping. And I say to him, hey, I want this jacket to be a sign to you that God is generous and that he loves you. For it says in my Bible that for so, God so loved the world that he gave. And he gave more than a jacket. He gave his only son that whoever believes in him should never perish but have eternal life. And he starts weeping. And I get to share, uh, I get to listen to his story. And when he comes to an end, I say, hey, my friend, are you ready to stop living for yourself? Are you ready to stop being your own master? Are you ready to give your life to Jesus? And he says, yes, I'm ready. And so we pray together, he gives his life to Jesus, and the man is glowing with life. And what I didn't tell you is that he was standing in front of all his friends that did not believe in Jesus. And why did he do that? Because Jesus is worth everything. And guys, there's a king out there who gave his life for us so we could live for him. And this took less than one hour of my day. So are you ready to go? I'm going to be praying in Bulgarian. Would you raise up your hands with me? We're going to be praying for the neighborhoods. Господи, в името на Исус Христос, аз се моля да дойдеш със своя огън, Господи. Точно сега Божи в арената Божи и да запалиш сърцата на всеки един, който е тук, Господи. Да достигне Божи, не достигнатите, Господи. Аз извиквам нова вълна на съживление, Господи, за достигане на кварталите, на улиците, Господи, на общностните, на всички етнически групи в името на Исус Христос. Аз извиквам Божи, свръхестествени Божи, срещи с тебе на улиците, Татко, да има сън Видения, Господи, да имат църкви там, където до сега не е имало църкви, Господи. Извиквам ново начало, Господи, за достигане и Боже. Ново начало за достигане сега, Господи, за Норвегия и за Европа в името на Исус Христос. I'm going to pray in Norwegian. Kjære Jesus, jag ber om att du ska driva oss ut, att vi ska få lov att vara ditt folk i nabolagen av våra herre. Far, jag ber om att vi ska vara med och bringa ditt rike där vi kommer till ditt nabolag, Herre. Far, jag ber om att människor ska få lov att möta din kärlek, din fred, hopp genom att vi bor där vi bor, Far. Herre, jag ber om att du ska sända oss till städer, nabolag, där vi får lov att möta människor med din kärlek, med din omsorg. Barn, äldre och vuxna som ska få lov att möta dig med din kraft, med ditt hopp och med din fred. Amen. Jag är I'm going to pray Norwegian too, real quick prayer. Jag ger tack för det för att vi vill se ett Norge som är vaska i Jesu blod. Vi tackar dig vi har sett i ene, vi har sett Hans Nilsen Hauge, vi har sett i stora ene, men vi tackar dig för ett folk som älskar dig, ett er folk som inte skammar sig över evangeliet. Jesus ber att du reiser oss upp och ger frimodighet att ge dig allt för du är er värd allt som vi har Jesus. Så hjälp oss att ge det tillbaka till dig Gud. Yes or no? I'm praying in Swedish. So God, we, we, Gud, vi ber att du i den här stunden skulle förlösa en frimodighetens ande över var en som är här, över oss som är här. Vi ber att du skulle lösa våra tungor att predika evangelium överallt där vi går fram. Och vi tackar dig för att i ditt namn finns öppna dörrar där det har sett stängt du. Så i ditt namn så talar vi öppna dörrar i våra grannskap, i våra städer. Öppna dörrar till människors hjärtan som inte känner dig. Och vi ber just nu att du skulle fördriva människofruktan i våra liv. Att du skulle fördriva människofruktan och dö på oss i ande och i eld för att nå våra städer, för att nå våra grannskap och vi tackar dig för att du har sagt i ditt ord att du är den som lägger orden i våran mun så jag ber just nu om en tillit till att det är sant 
om att du är den som ska lägga orden i våra munnar. I Jesu namn. Friends, it's our turn. I want you to get together with someone next to you in groups of two or three. Let's get together in groups of two or three. The Bible says in the book of Kings that if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, forgive their sin and heal their land. I believe that God wants to heal our communities and heal our lands. So right now in your pairs and in your groups, begin to cry out for your community. Begin to cry out for your street, your family. Call people by name. Together right now in your groups, let's go and pray all in one voice. Let's lift up our communities before the Lord. We declare in our communities that a generation of Jeremiah's is raising up. That the word of the Lord would be like a fire shut up in our bones. Holy Spirit, come fill our communities with the fire and the fragrance and the presence of God. God, we ask for salvation, signs, wonders, miracles, and an activated church in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. friends and guys it's time to respond to what we've heard do you have your cell phone with you show me your cell phone all right so you have the send up if you have the send up go into it and if not you can use the QR code and you can scan straight into this response so we're going to respond because Jesus he wants to reach the people that hasn't heard you know Thomas started off this morning saying that this event is not only about the people in the room it's actually about the people who's not in the room yet you know so go into your app and go into my response and then you go into neighborhoods and actually the first response is that we want to ask you if God stirs that in your heart that to share the gospel with your friends because Probably, as I'm speaking right now, you can, it can come names to your mind. Thinking, oh, that person does not know Christ. That person does not have a relationship to Jesus. And I really want them to. Well, if you push this in the app, you can figure, find f three names that you tap in. And you, you say, I'll pray for these people the next months. I'll pray for these names every day. And I'll take the opportunity to share the gospel with them, to share my testimony with them. We'll actually send you stuff that helps you do that. If you want to do that, push read your friends in the app. And then you'll get a new response uh, saying, I will reach my friends. And then you write all the names in, okay? And the second is that I want to engage in a youth group. You know, maybe where you live, you're not involved in the church. You're not involved in the youth group. But actually, you could be part of building a youth group that will equip the young people for tomorrow. You could be part of creating a spiritual home for someone that's 13 or 14 that you can be an example to. And if you want to do that, you go to the app and then you push serve youth ministry. And when you've done that, you can say either that you want help from us or that you know where to go. And if you're a young person yourself and you need a youth group, find a home. Join a youth group because you need community around you. And then last one is to start a ministry or a fellowship. You know, guys, it's places in Norway and Europe and around the world. It's places that doesn't have one single church. It's places where you can wake up in the morning and think, I want to get to know Jesus, but there's no church to go to. You know, maybe you're the person 
that will start that church, that will actually pack your bags, move to that place, and establish a new church that will end up being the church and the home for people to get to know Jesus for generations. You know, that could be you. When I was 16 years old, I was called to church planting. And I'm 36, and I've been part of three. That can be you. You could be the person that sees that planted and pioneered. So if that's you, or if you think, I wonder if that's me, you really don't need to know. Just find that app and push that button um, and register and we'll be with you. Because Jesus wants to see a movement of people coming to faith all over our nations. wanted to save the world. When he wanted to fix every problem you and I have caused by our selfishness. Att när han ville fixa alla de problem som vi hade skapat med vår selfishness. Or all the problems you and I are facing in our families, in our street, with our neighbors. Nå vil gjenopprette alle de tingene som vi har forårsaket gjennom familie og på gata og i nabolagene. When God was going to confront all the evil powers of this world. Da Gud skulle konfrontere alle de onde kraftene som finnes i denne verden. You know what he did? Vet du hva han gjorde? He sent a child. Vet du hva han sendte et barn? He didn't send a young person who was strong. Han sendte ikke en, en ung person som var sterk. He sent a cuddly little baby one. Han sendte en liten skjønn liten baby. Who was totally defenseless. Som var helt forsvarsløs. He couldn't help but just being there. Han kunne ikke hjelpe med å bare være der. He was totally depending on the people around him. Han var totalt avhengig av folk rundt han. And he needed help for everything. Han trengte hjelp til alt. He was in diapers. Han var på bleier, han gikk på bleier. That's how Jesus came to this earth. Det var sånn Jesus kom til denne jorda. He wasn't born in a palace. Han var ikke født i et palass. He wasn't born in a place of influence. Han var ikke født på et sted med mye influens. Or a powerful place. Eller et kraftfullt sted. He was born in a cave. Han var født i en stall. Together with some animals. Sammen med noen dyr. That's how God came to save this world. Det var sånn Gud kom til å, å redde denne verden. Why did he do that? Hvorfor gjorde han det? Because you and I would have a nice Christmas story. Så vi kunne ha en fin julehistorie. A Christmas story to celebrate. En julehistorie som vi kan feire. No. Nei. Because he wanted to say that I am sharing your humanity. For han ville si at jeg vil dele deres menneskehet. I'm fully a person like you are. Jeg er et fullt menneske som du er. And just like you were when you were born, totally defenseless. Ak- akkurat som du når du var født, totalt ja, eh, f- eh, f- eh, hjelpeslisløst. He was also. Det var han også. Totally helpless. Totalt hjelpeslisløst. Aliona, she's a girl four years old. En jente som er fire år gammel. She's living in a refugee, in, sorry, in an orphanage in Ukraine. Eh, hun bor i en sånn eh, foreldre, eh, barnehjem i Ukraina. She shares a bed. Hun deler en seng. There is not enough beds for her. So she says, this is my corner of the bed and this is my pillow. Så det er ikke nok sengeplasser. Så hun sier, dette er mitt hjørne av senga og dette er min pute. 
Aliona is in the, in the orphanage because her mother cannot afford to give her food. Hon här är på det, i detta barnhem för mor har inte råd att ge henne mat. Her friends say that her mom has only been there once. Vännerna säger att mor har bara varit där en gång. That's not true, Aliona says. Det är inte sant, säger hon. My mama has been here several times. She loves me. Mor har mig varit där flera gånger. Hon älskar mig. I have a sister and a brother. Jag har en syster och en bror. They are living with my mother. De bor sammen med min, bo- min and mor. And one day my mother will come to get me. Och en dag vill mor mig komma och hämta mig. Well, maybe. Ja, kanske. Because certainty is a commodity you don't have in an orphanage. For säkerhet är inte en något gott du har i ett barnhem. Just like you don't have much beds. Och du har inte mycket sängplats. You don't have much food. Du har inte mycket mat. And you don't have much parental love. Och du har inte mycket föräldrar som älskar dig. Aliona is a social orphan today. Aliona, hur är en social föräldralös idag? I was walking in the streets of Warsaw. I left some meetings. And I wanted to do some errands. And so I was rushing through the crowd. So I liksom løpt igjennom folkemengden. In the corner of my eye I could see this little girl approaching me. Och i sidosynen min så så en liten jente som önskar komma upp till mig. She was asking for money. Hon spurt om pengar och till mat. I got a little stressed. I hurried on. Jag blev stressad och så liksom skyndte mig vidare. I crossed the street. Och gick över vägen. And just when I crossed the street, I looked up and there was this huge sign. Så när jag gick över vägen så såg jag ett stort skilt. Hamburgers, five kronor. Hamburgare, fem kronor. I got the message. Jag fick budskapet. You see, I think of myself as a Christian. Du ser, jag tänker på mig själv som en kristen. Someone who serves God. Någon som tjänar Gud. Who wants to do His will. Som man ska göra hans vilja. And then I was thinking about God. Så tänkte jag på Gud. Having a visitor from one of the angels. Och liksom att han fick någon besökande från från englarna. As he was sitting in heaven, and the angel came, "Hey, Father God, your child is hungry." Han satt liksom i himlen och sa, "Hey, Papa Gud, ditt barn är sulten." You better pay attention. She hasn't eaten for days. She's hungry. Du borde verkligen följa med. Hon har inte spist på dagisvis. And God is just relaxed in heaven. Och Gud bara sitter helt avslappnad i himlen. And he says, "Don't worry." Så säger han, "Inte bekymra dig." Because I have runar. My friend, he's in town. För jag har min vän Rune och han är i byn. And he's from this rich nation of Norway. Och han är från den rika nationen Norge. I'll just make sure they will meet. Jag vill bara vara gör gör de säker på att de mötes. I just saw the sign and I knew I had failed. Så när jag såg det skiltet så visste jag att jag hade felat. I looked for her, I couldn't see her anywhere. Vad sa du med kunde inte se någon plats? So I hurried on to do my thing. Så jag skyndte mig vidare för att göra min greje. I was going to buy candy for my daughter's birthday. Jag skulle köpa godter till min dotters bursdag. I went into the store. Jag gick in i butiken. I got a basket filled it with cheap candy. Jag fick en sån pose och fyllde det med billig godter. I decided what line to be in. The fastest one. Och jag bestämde mig för att vara den raskaste. And I'm good at this, so I I got into the fastest line. Och jag gick in i den raskaste linjen. To pay. Kön, till att betala. And it worked well until there was a couple right in front of me. Och rätt före mig så var det ett par. And this couple they didn't have enough money. Och detta par hade inte nog pengar. And they had bought some oranges and some cheese. De hade köpt någon apelsin och lite ost. So they tried to change the oranges for smaller ones. Så de prövade byta de stora med de små. The cheese for smaller ones. Och en mindre ost took forever. Took sjuk lång tid. And I was just standing there finally I thought to myself. Så stod jag där och så plötsligt så tänkte jag mig själv. Maybe I should just pay for them. Kan jag bara betala för dem? Just to get this line moving. Bara för att få den här kön till att fortsätta vidare. Really? Virkelig? I was so shocked by the selfishness of my thought. Jag blev så chockerad av den det selviska. I got paralyzed while they finally got their money fixed and and paid and. and jag blev helt lammad när de när de liksom fick tag i pengarna och fick betalt. And I. Emptied my basket of candy. So tumped, so tumped, I like some my my pose with gold and I paid it. And I walked out of there pretty distressed and depressed. So I got out there from very stressed and deprimed. And I decided to take the tram back to the meetings. So so I decided to take the tram back to the meetings. And you know how you know it's like a ticket booth. 
and there's a hole down here. Så vet när det är sån där biljettluke och så är det så ett hull här nere. I, I never know if I'm supposed to speak through that hole or not. Jag är aldrig liksom helt säker på om jag ska kika igenom det lilla hullet. And when I'm outside the country I definitely want to make sure I'm understood so I was leaning in like this. Så när jag liksom är i utlandet så vill jag göra att vara säker på att jag är gör mig själv förstått så jag bynt att se in sån här. One ticket please. Vad är det här? And then an arm and a hand came from behind right into my face. Så kom det någon rätt fram för mitt ansikt. The arm was filled of bandage and blood. Det var fyllt av bandage och blod. Was dirty. Och och skitent. And I knew I had to act. Och jag visste att jag måste handla. But I didn't know what to do. Men jag visste inte vad jag skulle göra. There are so many decisions. Det är så många valg. Should I give the loose change? Ska jag ge någon pengar? Or should I give the big bill? Eller the big the big money. Eller det det stora pengarna. I decided I needed to give the big one. Så jag bestämde för att ge den stora. I put it right in the hand and I kept running away from him. Så så la i hon och så löp jag iväg. Because I was so awkward in my heart. För jag var liksom så ödelagt i hjärtet. I I had no language of love. Jag hade inte något språk av kärlek. Maybe maybe the Norwegian understand it. I felt like Hellström being hugged by Truls. Maybe the Norwegian understand. <laughs> Because I was feeling so awkward. För det fölte mig så bekvämt. I had no language of love. Jag hade inte något språk av kärlek. And isn't that how it usually is? Är det sånt som det egentligen är? Pain is often so private. Smärta ofta så privat. It's hard to relate to pain. Det är vanskligt att relatera till smärta. We need to ask God to give us compassion that we can reach and cross that border of private pain. Så vi måste spöra Gud om att ge oss en sån lidenskap till att gå för, över den gränsen med smärta. Children, barn, are special in the eyes of God. Är speciell i Guds öjne. He really fancy those who are powerless. Han verkligen ser att de som är kraftlösa. The widows, the refugees. Enkarna, flyktingarna. We need to do the same as him. We need to care for the lost. Vi måste göra det samma som han. Vi måste bry oss om For de suffering ones. De som lider. You know, very often I ask myself. Ofta så spårar jag mig själv. How can I live a life that is good and acceptable to God? Hur kan jag leva ett liv som är gott och acceptabelt för Gud? And my answer is very often I need to do some religious exercise. Svaret med det ofta är att man gör en sån religiös handling eller praktiserar. But you know that doesn't impress God. Men det är inte det som imponerar Gud. What impresses God is something totally different. Det som imponerar Gud är något helt annat. James says in chapter 1 verse 27. Jakob i Sir Jakob 1:27. Religion that our God or Father accepts as pure and faultless is this. En Guds styrkelse som är ren och felfri för Gud. Vår far It is to look after orphans and widows in their distress. Är att hjälpa enka och föräldralösa barn i deras nöd. And to keep yourself from being polluted by the world. Och inte låta sig fläcka till av världen. If you want to top that up. Om du verkligen vill sätta det högt på listan. If you want to press into the Lord even more. Om du önskar gå ännu närmare Gud. To fast and really press into the Lord. Liksom det att be och fasta och gå i närmare Gud. What you can do. Det du kan göra is to spend yourself on behalf of the hungry and satisfy the needs of the oppressed. Ta och verkligen bruka dig själv till att hjälpa de som är sultna och hjälpa de som är deprimerade. Then your light will sh- rise in the darkness. Då vill ditt liv verkligen rensa sig i mörkret. And your night will become like the day. Och 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 ljus vill bli som som dagen. You know we say that God is watching us. Du vet vi ser att Gud han ser på oss. He is never leaving us or forsaking us. Han han förlåter oss aldrig. But more than that. Men mer än det. He has been in our shoes. Han har varit i våra skor. Jesus was a child. Jesus var det barn. He knows what it is to be a rough have a rough childhood. Han vet vad det är att ha ett rufft eh, uppdragelse. And, and that's why he is saying. Det är därför han säger. Whosoever welcome one of these welcomes me. Han som älskar en av de minste. And he also says if you whatever you did for one of these least of these også, brothers and sisters mine you did it to me. Vad än du gör för den minste av dessa mina bröder och systrar har du också gjort mot mig. At that time Jesus is saying 
På den tiden så sier Jesus, you gave me food. Du ga meg mat. I was naked, you clothed me. Jeg var naken, men du kledde meg. But the sheep on the side in the story say, when did we see you? Men de som sto på siden sa, vi så deg aldri. And the question I want to ask you is when did you see Jesus last? Spørsmålet vil spørre deg, når så du Jesus sist? Was it during worship? Var det i lovsangen? That's awesome. Det er fantastisk. Was it during your last camp? Var det liksom i din siste camp? Leir. Leir? That's great. Det er jo fint. But when did you see Jesus in the eyes of a little child? Men når så du Jesus gjennom øynene til et lite barn? Gerd Edwin, you need to come and help us pray. For these children and for ourselves, that we may be able to respond to the call. Sammen om at vi som kirke skal få være Jesu føtter og hender. Så gå to og to. Let us stand together and pray that we as a church shall be the hands and feet of Jesus and go two and two. Så bare gå sammen to og to, så ber vi nå om at vi som kirke skal få være Jesu hender og føtter. At vi skal få vise Jesu kjærlighet til verden. Så bare begynn å be med nabomannen. Så ber vi nå at Gud skal kalle oss som kirke. So pray with your neighbor that God will call us as a church to be his hands and feet to the children, to the orphans, to the poor. God, we just pray that you will grip our hearts. That your love, God, that you have for the children, the love you have for the orphans, God, that that will just break our hearts so we as a church can be your hands and your feet to this world, God. Lord, I pray that our message will not just be words, but it will be actions, God. That we will reach out, we will open our hearts, we will open our homes, and we will people that reach out with your love to the people that need you, Jesus. God, raise up the church to be your hands and be your feet. In the name of Jesus, amen. Kjære Jesus, takk for at vi kan komme til deg når vi sitter alene og ber. Men takk for at vi også kan ta sammen tusenvis av mennesker og bare løfte vår bønn opp til deg i fellesskap. Vi ber deg for alle fattige barn rundt omkring, både i Norge og ellers, som lever i fattigdom. Hjelp oss til å se de som trenger å bli sett. Led oss og vis oss veien til hvordan vi kan vise kjærlighet for de som trenger det aller mest, og som trenger hjelp og støtte til å komme seg opp. Takk for at vi kan få hjelp av deg til å se hvor vi skal gå og hvor du leder oss. Jeg ber deg for alle sårbare barn som vokser opp i fattigdom, kjære far. When I was 12 years old, my parents said yes to becoming a foster family. And a little girl came into our hearts and into our family. And I can honestly tell you that in the good times, but also in the hard times, God is so faithful. And it's been such a blessing to have her in our home. My parents thought of it as a calling from the Lord to raise this girl up so that she would know that she is loved, so that she would know that she has a father in heaven that has a plan and a purpose for her life. My parents had four children before they said yes to a fifth one. So I just want to pray, Lord, come with your calling upon people's lives today. Lord, come with your, with your calling, Jesus. Come with your presence to fall on families, Lord. God, we pray for children to come into homes, God, to, to be loved, God, to be seen, Jesus. Father, we pray for the foster system, God. We pray that Christian families will rise up, Lord, to see you, Jesus, to see you for who you are. Turn to your neighbor and start to pray for the foster family system and for the foster kids. And it starts to cry out to the Lord.
Yes, Jesus, we pray for families to rise up, Lord. We pray, Jesus, that kids all throughout Norway will come into good homes with Christian families, Jesus, with parents that will tell them that they love them and that that will show them the way of the Father. Jesus, I thank you that you have called us to love your children. So Holy Spirit, would you come and would you breathe upon us? Thank you, Lord. I last saw my mummy on the 20th of December, five years ago. My younger brother and I were crying. She packed her things and went across the field. That was the last time I saw her. She just went away. I miss her so much. All the children who have a mother don't know how lucky they are. Today, today we want to challenge you to act. So you can open your app again. So they can open the app and there's again. And in the app there is a possibility to say. Or in appen there is a possibility to say. I want to sponsor a child. I want to sponsor a child. You open the heart with the family inside. You open the heart with the family inside. And the first top line is, I want to sponsor a child. Og den første topplinje er, du er vil sponsere et barn. And the question I want to ask you, og spørsmålet jeg skal spørre dig, will you help families stay together in Ukraine? Vil du hjælpe og lade familier kunne stå sammen i Ukraine? Will you sponsor a Ukrainian social orphan or one just about to be one? Og skal du da også støtte en en forældreløs barn eller noget som holder på at blive det? You can do that by pressing I want to sponsor a child in the app. Du kan gjøre det nå ved å trykke jeg ønsker å sponse foreldreløse. And you can do it now. Og det kan du gjøre nå. And then we are going to see one more video. Så skal vi se en video til. Få spise fri. In Norway, we need 1,000 foster homes every year. I vet i Norge så trenger vi 1,000 foster hjem hvert år. Some of you are young. Nogle af dere er unge. You can decide that in the future, when I get old to get my own family, I will be a foster family. Du kan bestemme dig for når du blir eldre og får din egen familie i fremtiden, så skal jeg ta inn et fosterbarn. If you're older, you can maybe have room for one already. Kanskje hvis du er eldre, så kan du allerede ha rom til en til. If you're interested in information, just tap Become a Foster Home, and you'll get contacted and information. Hvis du vil ha mer informasjon, så kan du trykke på den knappen. And if you want to care for the families with children that are struggling. Og hvis du ønsker å være med og hjelpe disse familiene og barna som lider. And you're more than 20 years old, you can volunteer in a program called Home Start. Og er over 20 år, så kan du være med og være frivillig til å hjelpe i noe som heter Home Start. If you want to do that, you just click on Help a Family, and someone will contact you, give you a training, 
and you can invest three hours every week. Så kan du bara trycka på den knappen och så vill hon kontakta dig och och vägleda vidare vad som kan ske for at least half a year. For i vart fall ett halvt år. Thank you for doing something for the children in this world. Tusen tack för att du gör något för barnen i denna värld. God bless you. Gud välsigna dig. Everybody to stand up where you are. Stand to your feet. How many can feel the presence of the Holy Spirit in this place? Right now, wherever you are, just lift up your hands to heavens. Just begin crying out for God's glory to fill this room. If you pray in tongues, you can pray in tongues. Just lift up your voice. And let the presence of God fill this arena right now. Holy Spirit, increase your presence in this place.
for God's presence to fill you in your own language doesn't matter where you come from this is what the kingdom looks like every nation tribe and tongue worshiping the king of kings right now just lift up your voice
Come on, just praise him one more time as loud as you can all over this arena. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. The hope for Oslo. The hope for Norway. The hope for Europe. The desire of the nations. And Can you just give Jesus one more big back clap offering wherever you're at? So that will understand. If you could just take a seat wherever you're at. Hvis du bare kan sette deg ned hvor du står. Finn en plass og sette deg ned. We're going to continue the spirit of worship. Vi skal fortsette i lovsang. But before we want to just quickly go into the word.